nice to be back. Uh, we are normally from Aberdeenshire in Scotland. From BrewDog, we have James Watt and Martin Dickey. Welcome to the show, guys. The biggest mission today is just make other people passionate about great craft beers as we are. And now, the three-time winner of the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters Excellence in Broadcasting Award. The recipient of two Pennsylvania Associated Press Broadcasters Association Awards for Excellence. Promoting and advancing the craft and microbrew culture in Northeast PA. This is another edition of The, the Friday, Friday Beer Buzz. Buzz! Yes, and the Friday Beer Buzz, powered by Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar in Exeter. Sabatini's with the area's greatest selection of rare, craft, and imported beers, growlers, and crowlers, and 37 rotating drafts at Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar, Wyoming Avenue in Exeter. Lindo Sabatini is with us this morning. And, um, thank God this isn't the Monday Beer Buzzer. It might be a different story. Good morning. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, on the phone, we also have, uh, we have Bill from MyBeerBuzz.com. Bill, how you been? Hey, happy Friday. I'm, I know I'm sharpening up the edge on my snow shovel and gassing up the snow for work for Monday. I still have to send you my address, but what time can you be at my house? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, you know, it takes a little while to walk there, but, uh, you know, I'll shovel a path as I go. And I'll greatly, greatly appreciated it. Uh, there's also uh, <laughs> my show stumbling business dot com. Not forget. Um, Nancy's not here. Nancy had a run out. Family members COVID. A couple exposures there, so she had to get a COVID PCR test. Only appointment they had was right now, right now. So oh she boy. To, yeah, well, she doesn't have any symptoms. Okay. Um, so imagine that that trade off. I could either sit in the studio and have a beer, or I can go wait in line to get a PCR test. Uh, I think it's it, close. Yeah. Close. I think she had had an appointment, but uh, let me just check in real quick because we're going to get to beer news in a second. Linda, what's going on at uh, Sabatini's? Eh, not much. Pizza, beer. How yeah. does, how does a, an impending snowstorm hurt or hurt or help you guys? Uh, and from a business, I'm just curious from a business we, perspective. We, we may get some people coming into the store with, with, uh, with the eggs, loaf of bread, milk mentality. <laughs> that they need to get a, a six-pack or two or something. Oh, that'll, yeah. uh, you know, maybe a good imperial stout to help you shovel but other than, other than that we really won't hit as much until you know it starts and then on sunday if it starts early it'll you know it affects it'll be slow it'll, but i'm guessing after you get locked down like that though so say people are like stuck inside for a couple days if that happens then i'm guessing there's a certain we have to get out and eat during the snowstorms i mean we, there is other business we pick up like you know when it stops yeah all, all the car lots buy a lot of pizza for the guys that have to take the snow off the car no, and, and that kind of stuff and all the plow guys stop and get pies the things i never would think about oh, yeah and that's why i asked that question that weird curiosity i have some people might think that's a stupid question but i'm feeling quite satisfied by the answer that's good <laughs> um we got some uh, beer news and then we're going to try a sample it's, it looks it's going to look like a pretzel on the bottom in the can here but we're going to get to that in a minute. i'm getting ahead of myself here uh bill from uh, mybeerbuzz.com we got some beer news what do you have yeah so last week we launched a little thing we, we were loosely calling beer buzz um We'll come up with a better name eventually. Uh, and we asked our listeners to email me their beer questions at mybeerbuzz at gmail.com. And our fine listeners followed through and did so. Now, there's a few questions I can't read on the radio because they had nothing to do with beer and, and they, they weren't very uh, 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 on topic. But, but I, I did get a great hang question. On, I, I did send the pictures as they requested. <laughs> I had to find the right angles, but it worked. I hope they're happy. I did get. Get in a, qu a question, and it was from one of our female listeners who asked not to have her, her name used, but she asked, she said she's, she's starting to get interested in beer, but she doesn't even know where to start. And she's familiar with the very basics of beer, like Budweiser, Bud Light, Miller Light, those kind of things, and she doesn't know where to start. And so the easy answer for that is to try to figure out what you like you need to try more than a few things. There are two very broad categories of beer. There are lagers and ales, and I think they are distinctly different flavors and distinctly different lanes in right. the beer world. And it has to do with how the beer ferments. But, it, but in very general terms, the lagers are a little bit more crisp and clean and less complex and a little bit lighter body. And the right. ales can be all over the map. So I tell people, try a few. You know, go to Sabs. Sabs has small taster glasses. They have very good bar staff. They can kind of guide you along and say, okay, that's a lager, that's an ale, right. that's a chocolate stout, 
Um, and, and, and the idea is to try to find one that you kind of like and then build on that. You know, if you find you do not like chocolatey, stout, heavier beers, then go in a different direction. If you don't like hoppy beers, right. go in a different direction. I always tell people, try a basic kale ale. I have um, a question or, uh, real quick. And I, yeah. I, I want to segue over to, like, if I went into Savatini's, Lindo, I come in and go, so tell me about this beer. I've, I've heard so much about it. I'd like to try some. Um, I've only had a sip of Budweiser. I didn't like it, but I hear there's... It, it, give me three things that you think I might like, just to show me the difference. Because is there three specific types that would you bring? Like, what would you recommend? Like, so, I mean, exactly what Bill's saying. So, yeah. if somebody that says I don't, I don't like beer because I, I can't drink Miller Lite. I don't like the taste. Right. Well, maybe, maybe we would offer them a Belgian White, okay. St. Bernard Sweet. Then, I'd probably give them a fruit beer, and then maybe, you know, depending on what um, what they give, other couple words they give me, maybe I pick them a stout or, or a Belgian ale or something. Just like he's saying, and see which way they go, and then from there we could build on and find out the beer you, that is good for you. Okay. Yeah, that happened to me when I first turned 21. I remember going to this one sports bar, and it was in Jersey, and I was not a beer guy at all. And I've never been a huge beer guy, but they had Yingling Black and Tan, and they tried that. And I was like, wow, this is not what I thought beer was. That was my first, you know, taste of that. So there is, it's not, beer is not beer. The beer is, there's so yeah. I've learned that from working with you guys. Yeah, once you, once you find your niche, then you can build on. You know, if you say, I like fruit beers, or I like sour beers, or I like sweet beers, or I like dessert stuff, you can build on that, and the staff and chaps can build on that. And then not just find you one, you can probably find dozens of beers in that same lane. Um, so, great beer question. Keep them coming. Email them to mybeerbuzz at gmail.com. We have some crazy beer news this week. Uh, I know Lindo and I have been prognosticating and predicting for the last several months that craft beer was going to take a hit um, and that we would be losing a lot of these breweries. And, and this week, uh, that has come true. And so let's run them down here because it's, it's actually a list. Um, we did talk last week about Sweetwater Brewing in Atlanta, and they purchased a Green Flash and Alpine. We now have a number on that, and it's supposed to be a $5.1 million in cash deal, plus about $30 million worth of real estate that they will not comment on the price. So they're, they're a too big one in, to me, but thankfully they are falling back into the craft beer world. The next few are not so lucky. Um, first up is U.S. Beverage has now acquired Uinta. Uh, Uinta, if you're not familiar, is Utah's largest independent craft brewery. Um, they're saying staff, going, is staff is going to remain in place. The beers won't change. The distribution will increase, but, but we'll see. Um, and we'll see if Uinta gets counted as craft beer now by the Brewers Association or not based on this buy. My guess is no. Uh, the next one's a really interesting one because it's going in the opposite direction. Molson Coors owns a brewery in California called St. Archer, and it's in San Diego. And it was Miller Coors, and, and their craft farm is called Tent and Blake. It was their first purchase of a craft brewery way back in 2015. But what they did was they actually bought a craft brewery that was really only two years old. It was started by a couple surfers in California. And it, it, it really made no success out of it. They didn't improve it. In fact, they kind of killed it. And so what they've done is Molson Coors has sold St. Archer. They've shut it down, and they've sold all of the, all of the facilities and all of the equipment to Kings and Convicts. And if Kings and Convicts sounds familiar, it's because a few years ago they made a big splash by purchasing Ballast Point. Um, and, and that's another Miramar, California, another Southern California brewery. So Molson Coors closing St. Archer, but Kings and Convicts opening it back up as another craft brewery. So that one, like I said, is going in the opposite direction. But the big one, the showstopper of all showstoppers this week, and one that quite honestly shocked even me, um, Monster Energy, the energy drink conglomerate, is interested in getting into the alcohol sector and they spent $330 million on purchasing Canarchy. And if you're not familiar with Canarchy, Canarchy is a conglomeration of craft beer breweries. And sadly, it includes uh, some of my favorites, Oscar Blues, Cigar City Brewing, Deep Ellum Brewing, Perrin Brewing, 
and squatters in Wasatch Brewing out in Utah. Um, Oscar Blues, we've had him on the show many, many times. Same with Cigar City. We've had many of these guys on the show. But uh, they they are leaving, apparently leaving the craft beer world. And that'll be another interesting story to follow. Does the Brewers Association say now they are no longer craft and they no longer count toward the numbers and the percentages of the craft beer? But they what do. I mean, do they? They don't. I mean, for Monster, for Monster, it makes sense. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is for how big Monster is and they're nationwide, most of their stuff is made in breweries. I mean, some. Really? Yeah. You know, a lot of the, some of it's made. I don't know if they're still making it in Wilkes-Barre, but Lion Brewery was making a lot of Monster for a long time. So now all of a sudden, for, with this purchase, they have their own canning lines where they can make their own product. So, I mean, that's why they're doing it. And, and with the splash of where the locations are, all of a sudden they have little breweries or Monster facilities all throughout the country. And they bought, what, Canarchy? Canarchy. It sounds like a movie, like yeah. Monster Energy, Canarchy. And Canarchy. Canarchy is a name that they made up to refer to all of their breweries put together. And Oscar Blues is actually, IRI numbers, Oscar Blues sales are down 20%, which is wow. significantly more down than others. So it may be a very smart move for them. Hey, Bill, I, I just want to yeah. jump, I got to jump in here, and I know we you probably have a long list of Beer news, and this is uh, probably when Nancy steps out. I've lost control of the, the time here. We have to get this thicker. <laughs> so I know you have what you've talked about, plus at least let's say I'm gonna go low here and say a thousand other bits of beer news over the past few years. Always no. updated at mybeerbuzz.com. Yeah, no, I, I would just say go out and search on my site. I can't talk about this on the radio, but search on Taps Dry January on mybeerbuzz.com if you want a good laugh. Our beer today comes from. Maryland Heights and to the St. Louis, Missouri area comes from O'Fallon Brewing Company, and it is naughty peanut butter pretzel beer. And there's a lot, just lots, lots to digest there, literally. But uh, Lido, lit tell us about the beer. So, I mean, we have a lot of people, and believe it or not, come in and ask for pretzel beers. And I'm, I'm not sure where it came from or who the first pretzel beer was, but it's basically they're they're using different malts to to make it try to taste like to, to try to taste like a pretzel. I've never I've had a lot of different pretzel beers. Most of them are wheat based. Um, this one, this one to me, um, is different because they're adding peanut butter as well. So when you go ahead and you take you, you take a sniff out of, out of that glass, you do get you do get peanut butter. I mean, it really yeah, is. that jumped out to me right away. And I never when I saw that when you said pretzel beer, I thought, oh, it goes good with pretzels because I guess that's how I think. But I don't get pretzel taste at all. Well, let me let me let me say another word. How about salt? Are you picking up a little bit of a yeah, salt? Yeah, a little bit of salt. Like a little bit of a pretzel, so that's a pretzel that's also a salty it, finish. In my brain, I feel like it's implied that it goes with peanut butter. For some reason, I get a salty thing, but not no. Well, I mean, a lot of the pretzel beers will add salt. I mean, this is the first one I've had that adds peanut butter. So I mean, if you as you drink it, I mean, to me, look, the first couple of sips, I keep getting different flavors. I got the pretzel, the pretzelly salt thing going on. I get the peanut butter. I mean, it's an interesting beer. Would I drink, sit down and drink a six pack of these? No, absolutely not. I mean, I, I, it's good to try it. It's good to share uh, one or two of these. Uh, I, I, O'Fallon has been doing a really good job with a lot of different beers we've been carrying from them. Uh, back in back in October, I think we might have had right. 900 different pumpkin beers from them. They hit a bunch of pumpkin ales, but this one uh, this one is is pretty solid. It's worth it's worth trying, and it's a little bit of a, a, a different uh, right. animal. I don't know. O'Fallon naughty peanut butter pretzel beer. This might be one of my favorite cans here, and it says creamy on here. I'm assuming that that's just for ad, for the logo. They don't have a chunky version. <laughs> Linda almost spit his beer out. I, just, I hope there's not a chunky version. Yeah, it's like a, what, what did you just spit on the floor? I don't know. I think it was a peanut, and let's just pretend. <laughs> hey, listen, um, uh, this is available at uh, 17 East, correct? Um, oh, yeah. And all of the, this is again, O'Fallon's Naughty Peanut Butter Pretzel Beer, and, um, and all the beer news you want and more at my beer buzz.com bill thank you for coming on i wish we had a little more time i got to get to joe Stenecker with the storm coming up okay um yep sounds good have a good weekend and you stay too. safe when you're shoveling you too and again the friday beer buzz every friday at 35 we start this thing here friday beer buzz powered by sabatini's pizza and sabatini's bottle shop and bar in exeter with the greatest selection in the area of rare craft and imported beers growlers and growlers 37 rotating drafts at sabatini's pizza and sabatini's bottle shop in bar wyoming avenue in exeter lindo thank you for being here as always thank you hope business is great and the storm doesn't impact it and uh that's it have an awesome weekend Thank you very much. And again, the Friday Beer Buzz. We'll do this again next week. The Friday Beer Buzz bringing good beers and good people together.